Hi, I'm Verlin Brock, and welcome to The Verlin Show. We're down in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we've been invited out to a ranch here just out of Nashville, and I'm so proud to be here today. I'm with David Furzell. He is my guest today on the show. David's coming up real soon. He's going to sing for you. He's going to talk about God. He's going to talk about his life in the music. Uh, we're just going to talk about a lot of good things, so stick around. Stay with us. Uh, I wrote a song a few months ago called She Underlined It. wrote it about Mom. Mother's Day is coming up real soon, and uh, I'd like to play this for you and to all the mothers out there, whether you're here or in heaven waiting. Happy Mother's Day, and we all love you. From Berlin to you, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. She underlined it. Mom would always read her Bible Sometimes I would fall asleep But before I did I would always say Lord, I pray my soul you will keep. Sometimes I would be awake when mom would cry out in prayer. Every time I pick up her old Bible, Lord, it takes me right. Those words you wrote in red Mom believed in what it said Lord, she underlined it Left her marker between the pages So her little boy Oh, he could find it And if she's looking down right now from heaven Would you tell her can see, can see that those words he wrote in red I know she underlined them for me I still got mom's old Bible it found a place and I Oh, but I am still that little boy Although I have children of my own I often turn through those old pages That mom underlined in red Lord, it takes me right back there Still believe in the blood that you shed. Oh, those words you wrote in red. Mom believed in what it said. Lord, she underlined. Left her marker between the pages. So a little boy.
you tell her I can't see, see. that those words you wrote in me, I know she underlined them for She underlined them for Welcome back to the Verlin Show. Hope you enjoyed that song. She underlined it. And happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. Told you I had someone going to be on with me. David, welcome to the show. All right. Well, hey. I'm glad you're here at my studio. We're, we're having a good time with everybody here today. It's going to be fun. Oh, it is. And uh, I just, I don't know how to tell you any other way, but uh, my hat's off to you. All those years I grew up uh, uh, listening to David on the radio back in eastern Kentucky, and never did I ever think that I would have the opportunity to come in his studio for the first time in his studio, pick up an acoustic guitar, and sit down with David and talk about God, America, our music, and talk about the things that mean the most to Lefty Frizzell. You know, I'm just glad they play my, my songs in Kentucky. Oh, they are. <laughs> they are. They are. We, uh, David, uh, uh, I, I just, I can't tell you. Uh, last night, um, I got to tell you this real quick. We came down here about two years ago, uh, called David up one day, and I said, David, we were talking on the telephone, and uh, I said, there's a young lady uh, back in eastern Kentucky, and she's battling cancer. And David said, what? And I said, she's battling cancer. Uh, David said, hey, I got an idea. I said, I've got a friend by the name of Jimmy Fortune, and said, uh, he prayed for one of my friends, and he's cancer-free today. And, and you know what? Long story short, David said, let's get together, come to my ranch, let's sit down and call that young lady on the telephone, and let's pray right over the telephone. He got in touch with Jimmy Fortune, and it just, uh, it just went hand in hand. And you know what, David? Today she's cancer-free. You know, that same type of thing has happened a couple of times. Uh, the first time, as you mentioned, my friend out on the West Coast, he had cancer of the bladder, and it was about to take him out. And um, I got Josh said, well, I got to figure out something here. You know, he's getting ready to go back in for his 10th or 11th surgery. Right. And so I got Jimmy Fortune. He was the guy I always called. <laughs> he's the guy. I'm going to hang on to Jimmy because wherever he's going, I'm going. Do that. So anyway, so I got Jimmy and we sat down and we got him on the phone. Got the, my friend out on the West Coast on the phone. And Jimmy says all these special words. And, um, and uh, my friend went into surgery the next day. And he's it's been about, oh, maybe 10, 12 years ago now. And he's been cancer free ever since. Wow. And then that happened with you and, and, and your friend. And it's happened a couple of other times. And sometimes I call Jimmy and, uh, and I'm, I always call Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy's, Jimmy's the guy I call. And whether I want him on an album or whether I want him on a, on a project with me or something. He's one of the first people I call. Well, the last time I called him was, um, I did a tribute to the great Buddy Holly. Exactly. If you're old enough to remember Buddy oh, Holly, oh, you come on. Anyway, so, so I, the first guy I called was Jimmy. I said, Jimmy, I'm doing a thing, special thing, so what, what do you want me to do? I said, well, come on over and bring your guitar with you. <laughs> and uh, so we sat right here and recorded the first song for the, the Buddy Holly Project. 21 songs on that album, and him and I wow. did the very first one, sitting right where you and I are right now. And it turned out so great. And then I went out to Merle. I could call Merle. Hey, Merle. <laughs> you remember Buddy Holly? Well, of course I remember Buddy Holly. He said, I'm one of his biggest fans. I said, well, then you won't mind helping me with this project then, would you? And he said, come on. He said, come out to, come, come out to, to the house. He, said, he, lives, he lives in California. Come out to the house. He said, I just built a million-dollar studio out here. Wow. Let's, let's break it in. I said, or break it down? No, let's break it in. <laughs> so I flew him out. Off with, to with, California. Off you know, we did. flew out. Jimmy wanted to go with us out there, but, but he, didn't, he didn't make the plane. So we went ahead and went out there and we recorded two or three things with Merle. Uh, three things out there with Merle. And what a time that was. So I knew we had it going when we had people like Jimmy Fortune and Merle Haggard on. Oh. I mean, you know. 
you got a pretty good chance of it working. <laughs> Goes without saying. Uh, I'm sitting here with David Frizzell in this studio, and and I got to tell you something. Uh, it's all about God. It's about that love between people. Like uh, he loves Merle Haggard. Uh, he loves Jimmy Fortune. And tell him about Jimmy Fortune. If if you're out there, younger people or you don't know Jimmy Fortune, tell him where Jimmy came from. Well, you from. know what? Jimmy was with the Statlers. He yes. was one that sang the high parts with the Statlers. But I just tell you that uh, he's one of the most talented people that I've run across in, in, in my is. lifetime. He is. And one of the just, just walking talent, you know. And, and uh, I always call him when I got a special project like the Buddy Holly thing or just whatever. And uh, he's never, ever let me down. And I call him to help like your friend. He's exactly. never, ever not responded. He always does. Uh, and you know, when we came here about two years ago and sat around the table and David laid that cell phone out there or house phone on the table and uh, at the ranch here and uh, Jimmy Fortune and uh, your guitar player, he was here. Oh, he was, that's uh, right. Your Morgan. wife. That's uh, right, yeah. That's several right. people, uh, somebody, uh, there were several people here, but I will say this much. They laid that telephone out on the table and began to pray for Casey Gooden. Uh, a lot of you back there in Eastern Kentucky know who I'm talking about. Casey had battled cancer for uh, over two years at this time. And uh, David said, hey, come on, let's pray. Yeah. And so Jimmy Fortune, all of them took time out and Pretty sat down good. at the table and prayed. And, and this is why I'm here, because when someone cares that much for your child, your friend, your people, to take time out of, I know you all have a busy schedule out there, they took time out to pray for Casey Gooden, and Casey Gooden is cancer free today, as far as I know. Isn't that amazing? And, and she had went through <laughs> battle almost three years, and she asked her mom, uh, Mom, why me? And she had a little eight-year-old brother that it just really touched my heart. Uh, he, was, he was falling apart over his big sissy, and you know, and Mom was, the whole family, but I'm so proud of you, Casey. I'm glad you're doing great today, and I'm proud of you, Jimmy Fortune, and all the people that prayed, all of you out there that prayed. But tell me, tell me, David, what do you got in store? What's going on? What's uh, you no? Know, we we're just involved in in, in just in just everything, and uh, you know we've done TV shows before. You you're talking about Alan, right? Alan, Alan Coleman, Coleman, Alan Coleman. Coleman. He's the one I call, you know. Um, and I've done here. I've done some big uh, hour specials for RFD, and and I always call Alan. He said he makes sure that I that that part of it is done well. Uh, I think the first one we did was back in 2008. And I called Alan up, and and uh, and I had 13 guest artists on that show, wow. from Merle Haggard to Crystal Gale to T. Graham Brown to absolute Jimmy Fortune, of course, of course. everybody, and um, and Alan brought the all the all the people to handle the cameras and the sound and the lights and and all, and I brought my sound guy who works who works here in my studio with me, and uh, and we made one of the Probably, I don't know if even Alan knows this, but we we did the TV show. I did the album. I did a, right. the album, and we sent that. And that that album was nominated for nine Grammys. It was also won the compilation album of the year in the UK. Wow! And it was in, we had the song called uh, "This Is Our Time." It was a song that, that me and a couple other guys wrote, and it was the song of the year in the UK. And uh, it was number one for about five or six weeks. Then it fell off to number two and went back to number one again. And we were in there against people like Alan Jackson and those kind of guys. But it's just an amazing thing when the songs are right. You know, when, when the songs tell the story, the songs are right and you got people like Merle doing them with you. Come on, that, that works. What can we say? <laughs> you know, we all have lived our lives uh, and uh, we've all went out and veered off and back and forth. Oh, yeah. But you know, here's what captivates me, uh, is being able to come back here uh, to Nashville, Tennessee, and, and all the trial and error I went through with in my life and the outlaw rim that I went through, uh, maybe uh, not as bad as Willie and Waylon, but you know, I was out there somewhere. I would hope not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh Lord, I hope Willie don't see this. But you know something? Uh, we all turn back that page uh, to God and where we came from and where we originated from. And I thought about what David told me earlier. He said, you got the wrong for Zell yeah. today. 
his little brother, uh, he's been singing, well, uh, ever since he was, what, two? Well, I took him out when Frizzell and West, me and Shelly West, right. uh, had the hits back in the 80s, You're the Reason God Made Oklahoma, and all those kind of songs. Oh, yeah. Well, Alan was married to Shelly, mm -hmm. but he was also the guitar player for the show. Right. So he was playing and singing his heart out. And I put him on the bandstand the first time when he was 19. Wow. Up in uh, Redding, California. And, uh, Earl Haggard neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, but he's just a great talent. And, uh, but he's out there doing gospel. has for, for a few years now. Oh, yeah. He he's had number one records in the gospel field and all that. So he's doing really well. So if you wanted somebody to do the gospel right along with you, he was the guy, he was the Frizzell that you should have had here. Uh, Alan Frizzell, I'm hoping he'll take my invitation in the very near future he'll be on the show. Maybe so. He's a very, very incredible talent. He is. And uh, we're just so proud to be here. I, I can't tell you enough uh, good things about what David's done for the music industry. And uh, uh, we were talking about T. Graham Brown earlier. T. Graham. Wow. T. Graham his, was doing You know, his, his, uh, his gospel album is up for Grammy right now, too. And while I was doing the Buddy Holly thing, I had T come over and do some stuff on it, do a couple of songs with us. But he was in the middle of doing his gospel so, uh, album, and is one of the and, and he would send me MP3 uh, his song, and he'd, get, he'd finish one and he'd send me an MP3 to get my opinion on it. And we was right in the middle of the Buddy Holly project, and uh, and I told him, I don't think I've ever heard anything better than this. And I was involved with one of the greatest projects I've already been involved with, which was. Uh, the Buddy Holly tribute, but uh, but T. Graham Brown, I don't know, there again, just one of the most talented people walking the earth today. We were at Bell County High School, Bell High, back in Pineville, Kentucky, years ago. Matter of fact, it was the year my mom died, passed away back in 1990, I believe it was, and my mom, we just uh, just went through that, and T. Graham came up to uh, Bell High, mm -hmm. and he started to get off the bus and his brother was with him then. I can't think he was managing his, uh, he was managing him. I can't think of his name right now. And uh, I want to say Randy. Uh, they started to get off the bus and uh, all the people were gathered around and, and under the pavilion there on the back of the school. And as T. Graham got off the bus, he looked over and saw me. And he was shaking hands and he looks over and goes, Berlin, and he just kind of runs through the crowd and greets me. I had met T. Graham. I used to work with T.G. Shepard some there, and I met uh, T. Graham prior to that. And he's just, uh, I'll tell you what he is. Whether he's on stage or on set, he's still T. Graham Brown. He, he he's just change. incredible. He's incredible. He's one of my really favorite is. people to work with. And he's one of the ones that I've called him mostly uh, on all my big, the big projects. And uh, but he's, he's just incredible. But you know, there's so many people that I've worked with over the years in, in this country music uh, business that um, they're all greater. I probably wouldn't be working with them very long, you know. But the people that we do end up working with from one project to another is because they're incredible. Oh, yes. And, and T. Graham, I think he just did something with Jason Crabb just recently. Well, it's, it's on his, he, Jason's on his, uh, his, his gospel album. Yeah, check that out. That's uh, T. Incredible. Graham Brown, Jason Crabb. He said he was up for a Grammy. He's up for a Grammy. Oh, he he just, may have already won it. I don't know. He don't, just the took Grammy's a, over or are they still going? I don't I know. I have no idea. What is today? <laughs> we are near Nashville, Tennessee. I can grant you that. And we're at David the Frizzell's Ranch. That's the only thing we know for sure. That's the only thing we know for sure. And after a while, we're going to... We're going to try to put these that. guitars together. This guitar, uh, if you can get this on the camera, this guitar was uh, my mom's. I learned to play on this. Uh, we have kind of did the background on it, and, and I actually learned to play on this, uh, uh, David Frizzell. And I've probably played, uh, what's that song, going to hire a, uh, kind of decorate my home there? <laughs> I've probably played that on here, and, uh, you know, that's why God made Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we've been fortunate to have some, some good songs. You and, have. Yeah. And uh, we've, been, we've been associated with people who's had great songs for years. Big Brother Lefty, back in, Talk back about in Lefty. his years. You know, he came out in 1950. And by the time 1951 rolled around, he had four songs in the top ten Billboard charts at the same time. Wow. The only people that's ever done that is the Beatles. Four songs in the top 10 Billboard country charts at the same time. And uh, 
And so I went to work with Lefty back. I summoned 54. I was just a kid. I was, you know, he's carrying me around, you know, a little kid. 54. And then 1956, I joined his show for the next four years. And I opened the shows for him, and then I brought him on. And then I'd play guitar with him, and I'd sing harmony with him, and I'd play harmonica with him on his part of the show. But, um, but I was with him for four years from 1956 to 1960, which then I went in the service and did all the service stuff. And then I came back out, and I got out in 64, and I went back and did some work back with Lefty, and I joined Buck Owens. Buck Owens, the great Buck Owens, I, you know, he is, and he was great. He was oh, really he great. Was. He was. And so I was a part of his show for a long time, and uh, and then I got with Shelley West, and we had you know, the reason got him in Oklahoma, and thanks to Clint Eastwood, the movie Clint Eastwood, he put us in one of his movies, and uh, with the song, and that that's what that's what happened with us, and the rest is history. We were talking earlier about uh, Lefty wanting to be able to. Uh, uh, do a gospel album, write the music, uh, and he never did get to do that. No, he never did, and and, and I know he talked about it a lot. And um, by that time, he'd already had all of his hits, you know, and he'd had, he he was coming back into having more hits. Actually, he started writing songs like uh, "That's the Way Love Goes" and "Never Go Around Mirrors," those kind of great, great, great songs. Him and Whitey Schaefer, and who was another great writer, as you probably you probably heard of Whitey. Anyway, oh, yeah. I'll just do a thing about. It. Yeah, I love Whitey, and yeah. uh, and so, but he never got a chance to to do it. And uh, of course, you know, he passed. He passed in 1975. He was 47 years old, so he never. He thought he had time to do it, uh, you know. And uh, sometimes you just need to follow your heart and go do it, you know. Yes, but I believe you'll follow that through before it's well, over. I, as I talked to you earlier, I, I just. You said you always want to do a golf. Course. Always wanted to, and I've done a few. Uh, I've written a couple of things, and uh, unlike Lefty, who wanted to write all the songs, because he was very capable of doing that, and, uh, and and him and Whitey and some of those people wanted to get together and write all the all the gospel songs, which would have been incredible. I'm sorry that we don't uh, have them here to to uh, to inspire us because that's what they would have done. That's exactly. But he and in my case. I'd like to maybe write about half of half of an album, maybe five or six songs, and do seven, cover tunes. and and and, not, and then do do the real ones. Exactly. You know, do the ones that stand the test of time, and and uh, and the ones that when you hear them, it, it, it makes a difference in your life when you just hear it. Exactly. And uh, so I like to do that, and I've been uh, because of what I've done in my lifetime. And, and um, so I have a lot of different people wanting me, asking me to do different things. I've never done a Christmas album. And and that's about what my wife talks about half the time is, you need to do a Christmas album, you need to do a Christmas album. And I've never done that. Uh, or do a blues album. So I was influenced by blues when I first started. And Elvis was just coming out, and Ray Charles was, was coming out. And so I was heavily influenced by the blues back in 1954, 1955. And uh, then Buddy Holly came along, and, and I was influenced by Buddy, and I was a big, huge fan of Buddy Holly's that time. But anyway, so right at this moment, when when you come out here to my ranch today, and I'm sitting here in my in my studio, I'm writing a screenplay off of the biography book that I wrote on my brother Lefty. I'm writing the screenplay as we sit here. Uh, that's awesome. That's and awesome. we've got it. We've got a movie deal in in California. And they're waiting for the screenplay uh, off of the book that I wrote on Brother Lefty. So that's what we're doing now. Tell me, tell me that isn't genuine love when uh, all these years uh, carried Lefty around, uh, took him out. <laughs> he carried me around during that whole first part. Right? That's, that's what I'm talking about. You have, you have carried Lefty all these years and vicariously. He has lived through your eyes, and that makes me so proud of you, He's David. That, that you have such a, uh, a honor for his music. Uh, David was telling me early when he does a show, he says, "I don't do a show without I sing some of Lefty's songs in it," and uh, that's what love's about. That's the kind of love we want instilled in the hearts of our children back there in Eastern Kentucky, Virginia, West Virginia, all over the world, not just there, David, down in Alabama out in California, New York City, what's going on up in Baltimore right now? It's, you know it's what, I, it's just... I enjoy singing Lefty songs as much as I ever re enjoyed singing my own. Oh yes. Oh, to yeah. me, those are the greatest 
songs in country music in country music period and uh, and I still do them I do a tribute to to the lefty and I I've never I've never went in competition with him and a lot of people like like especially a lot of people that uh, that are sons or daughters of, of of other big stars they almost always try to get you to compete with them. You're I, so right. I mean, the award shows, yes. the award shows, the Grammys, all this stuff is a matter of competing. You're competing with with whoever. I don't like the competition part of it, so I never, I never uh, competed against. What well, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to exactly. compete against the greatest in the world who was left. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But uh, um, but I still love to do his songs. And uh, and I think about him all the time. Almost every conversation I have in and around on, on the radio around the world. You know, we're getting ready to go to Ireland. We're getting ready to do a bunch of that kind of stuff. But this year, I'm hoping to to do get the Lefty movie started and gone and done. After that, then I'll make up something else. But that's what's happened. That's David first priority. Sale. That's my David priority for sale. Right now. I'm here at David for Sales Ranch in uh, beautiful Tennessee. We have a uh, we have a beautiful day out here. David is so beautiful out here. This ranch he has one of the beautifulest places I've ever been in my life. I'm uh, starting to just see the work involved as much as seeing the beauty of it. It well, is pretty. It is nice. <laughs> but I have to say that I look at this. Oh, I need to go do that. <laughs> but you know, there's always a honeydew list anywhere you oh, live. Yeah, I got one. It's like a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm uh, again, I'm at David Frizzell's Ranch, and I'm so proud. David, I just thank you for letting me come here. Let I'm me glad you're here, and right here is where a lot of stuff happens. Right where we're sitting right now, we do all the overdubs to all the albums that I've been involved with. Um, the Lefty book was written right here, where you're sitting here, right here. I was sitting right there where you are with a desk, and, and I don't type or anything, you know, but one, one little click here, one little whatever. But I wrote the entire book off of a laptop, one finger at a time. <laughs> that's love. That's three hundred some pages. Uh, wow. That, hey, let me tell you something. Uh, you can feel it here. Uh, <laughs> believe me, I, I'm so honored. I, I can't thank you enough, David. For there, there's one story I need to tell you. I think, and um, we are we have been close with Merle Haggard over the years, and and he's a, he's probably the only other person that I know who's as big a fan of lefties as I am. Uh, maybe even more if, it, if it's possible. But I'm sitting right where you are, and I was finishing this, I was, I was, I was really trying to get to the book, the, uh, the, the, the biography, where it said, the end. You know, the end. I'm just trying to get to the end. And I'm sitting here, <clears throat> and I'm typing, I'm trying to get to, and I'm at the point now where lefty passes away. So you know how sad it's going. You know the oh, last Lord. last two chapters are. I mean, tears are falling, and I'm trying to get the tears off of there. I'm trying to type, and uh, and I thought, I I want Merle to see this when I get it finished. I'm going to take him the first. I'll, I'll make him a copy of this, and I, I'm going to get it to him. I want him to be the first to see this this book on Lefty. So I was thinking about it, and while I was doing that, my wife Joanne went and found. Merle's new album at that time called Roots One. If you haven't heard of that album, you haven't heard it, you need to hear it because it's Roots One. Roots One. Anyway, so she knew I wanted that album. So while I'm doing that, she goes to the store down here wherever it's at, and she bought that album. She comes back. I didn't know she was gone. I didn't know she was here or gone out because I was trying to get the book, get the tears out of my eyes. And so she came back and she put the the record, the the CD, on out here, and I heard. Uh, um, uh, Look What Thoughts Will Do, a song that Lefty had, number one song from back in 1951 called Look What Thoughts Will Do. And it's Merle Haggard singing it, but he sounds just like Lefty. And I'm hearing that just like, I, I had no idea that, I, who, it all of a sudden, and the tears started falling even more, I thought I was just kind of ghostly, you know, just kind of eerie. And I thought, I need to call Merle. So I'm still trying to type, and all of a sudden, there was a little table here beside of me, and, and I looked down, and here was a note from Merle. He said, call me, I'm going through town, call me. And I thought, how in the world did that get there? <laughs> how did that get on this table? Because it wasn't there minutes before. And so I said, the end. 
I was so glad. Man, I just f fell back in the chair at the end. The whole book, 300 some odd pages had been written. And um, so I called Merle. And he was already in Atlanta. He was going down to do the, the shows in Tampa. The the uh, the um, uh, strawberry fest. No, it was the the uh, the state fair. Right, it was state right. fair, and uh, he was there on a Tuesday. I was going to be there anyway on Thursday, so man, I had a copy of that made, and we took off two days early, and we went down. I got on Merle's bus and I laid it down. This is the first. This is the first time you only had a chance to read this, and he still got it. Matter of fact, a lot of changes went into that book after that. A lot of changed a lot of things. But he got the very first one without any changes. Without any editing. Yeah, no any editing changes, involved. Yeah. He's got all of it. Uh, that's what it's about. Uh, true love of a brother. Yeah. True love uh, goes back to the biblical part. Uh, Jesus gave his life for us. He gave his life for you, gave his life for Lefty, me, and all of us. And that's what we want to see change. Uh, things have been so bad in America over the past few years and it seems to be worsening with all I mentioned earlier about what's going on up in Baltimore. There's so many bad things happening, but we want to talk positive. We want to talk about a change. Uh, we, want to see, uh, we want to see our children raised up right to have the kind of love that this man has for his brother Lefty Frizzell. And, and tell them, uh, David, how can get, they get that book? How can, how oh, can actually, they get your book? It's on any place that you buy books or you can just go to davidfrizzell.com and, and, and get it from there. Uh, and that way if it comes through davidfrizzell.com I'd usually autograph it. So. Repeat the title of the book. Too. It's called I Love You a Thousand Ways, The Story of Lefty Frizzell. And or it's on all the other places that you can download a book. I don't know uh, the, the download sites. I don't, I don't remember what, what the name of them are, but they're on all of them. So they can either download it or they get, if they want the book, they can just go, get in touch with davidfrizzell.com and uh, Joanne or one of the people who work, for, work with us uh, will make sure they get a copy of it. Right. Proud to be here at the ranch with David Frizzell. Uh, if you just tuned in, this is the Verlin Show. I'm here with David Frizzell in, near Nashville, Tennessee at David's Ranch. And uh, stay with us. Uh, we're, David's going to sing a song here in a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit more, and we're going to have prayer requests. We're going to read emails. Uh, got a lot to do yet. Stay with us on The Verlin Show right here on Living Faith TV. I'm Verlin. See you in a bit. If you'd like to be a supporter of The Verlin Show and partner with us to keep this exciting and uplifting show on the air, just send a love offering to Verlin Brock, 9 Music Square South, Suite 376, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203. Now back to more of The Verlin Show. Hey, we're back here with The Verlin Show. We moved outside, uh, got the camera crew all moved outside because I wanted you to see the beautiful view here of the ranch. And everyone's coming and going right now. and that came out for the show and we want you to be able to be a part of whatever we're doing. That's why I told him, I said, let's get it outside because I want the people back home to see what we're doing. Got a couple charity events coming up, a couple events coming up that I want to tell you about. And uh, I want you to help this young man and family. Tyler Carnes, he's awaiting a heart transplant at Children's Hospital in Cincinnati, Ohio. Tyler's mom, Kathy, has been right there, and, and dad, he's been there. They've all been there, stuck it out with this young man. And I ask you to take this upon yourself like if it was your child. Tyler's only 16. He needs your help. He needs your prayers, most of all. But if you can help them, please come out to the fundraiser. They're having a fundraiser in Bell County, Kentucky, in Pineville, just out of Pineville there at the Bell County Fairgrounds. And they're having it on May the 9th between 12 and 6 o'clock, and that is on a Saturday. If you will, please come out. They're having a silent auction, and uh, you won't be disappointed. Come out, pray with them. I don't know who all the family members will be there, and I plan on trying to be there. But I'll tell you this, if you can come out, please come. It's Tyler Carnes Fundraiser, First State Financial Bank. If you can't come, please, if you can help, please do this for me. Send all donations to Tyler Carnes Fundraiser, First State Financial Bank in Pineville, Kentucky, P.O. Box 126, Pineville, Kentucky, 40977. Or you can call them at 
6111. That's Tyler Carnes. And if you come to the show, by the way, it's $5 per person for admissions to come into the show, and that money will go to help Tyler. It's for a good cause, so please, if you can, come out. Another thing I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about Lynn Camp School down in Knox County, Kentucky. I stopped by Reed's Transmission the other day and talked to Merle Smith down there and his wife, Leslie. Uh, they are getting out the old auditorium there at Lynn Camp. They're cleaning it up, getting it ready, and they're needing some new sound equipment down there. And they're going to have a singing event in July. We haven't decided on uh, a date yet. But they have a tentative date set up, but we'll let you know exactly when it's going to be. And uh, I'll tell you here on the Verlin Show, but it's going to be in the month of July. We want you to come out. If you're a local gospel group, if you're local singers in that area, please come out. And what we're wanting to happen here, Lynn Camp is wanting to start this to where the other schools will open their auditoriums back up. Get your children involved. I was talking to Merle, and you know, brought tears to my eyes. Uh, I stopped by and he said, you know, Verlin, I'd like to help you right now with the Verlin Show, but what I'd like to do uh, is we want to do this fundraiser. Would you help? I said, hey, don't give me any money. Keep continuing doing what you're doing for the schools. They're donating to the schools. And out of about 4,500 uh, students in Knox County, they have uh, a quarter percent of them. They have about 1,100 uh, students there in Knox County that actually goes to Lynn Camp. We want you to help them. Come out to that event. It'll be in July, like I said, and they are going to need about nine or $10,000 to put their sound equipment back in. They're wanting to do uh, shows there, have about three or four hours of singing at Lynn Camp School, and that's going to be in July. Bring your guitar, bring it out. Let's play. I'm hoping to be there with a the band. We're going to put on a show. We're going to have a good time and help them raise the money they need. And do that in your schools, and I encourage you to do just that in your schools around there, all over the country, no matter where you're at, New York City, California, anywhere. Open up those auditoriums. Get your children involved in music. Let them learn about music. Keeps them off the street. Okay, I want to move on with the prayer request. You that have contacted uh, the Verlin Show, I've got emails, I've got a lot of uh, response. The prayer warriors, uh, I love y'all. I'm counting on you. Thank you for the prayers, what you're doing for the people and praying. And here's who you're praying for. When you pray, please pray for these people. I've got prayer requests from Mary Joyce Denny. She has uh, rheumatoid arthritis. She has lung infection. Uh, she's a very special friend of mine. I want you to pray for her. We love you, Mary, and we're praying for you. And I want all the prayer warriors to keep her in your heart. Mary Joyce Denny from up on 92 in Pineville. Tyler Carnes, waiting on a heart transplant in Cincinnati, Ohio, Children's Hospital. Pray for Tyler. Sue Mason, her son needs prayer. He's in trouble, uh, whether it's illness or whatever it is. God knows about it. Unspoken requ request. Pray for Sue Carnes. Um, Sue Mason, I'm sorry, Sue Mason. Don Elkins Hatcher, she's 45 years old. And she has sarcoma cancer, and she's being treated at the Mafia Cancer Center in Florida. It breaks my heart. She's 45 years old. She needs your prayers. I talked to Camille yesterday on the telephone, and uh, Camille has been there all the way through this, through the past uh, year and a half. We've had uh, our own challenge in life with Abrianna. And all you prayer warriors that's been there, you prayed. Hey, Brianna's doing real well, and we're so proud of God, and we're proud of you. Continue to pray. And Camille, thank you for that call from Florida yesterday. We enjoyed the conversation, and we love you. Um, please pray for Don. Remember Donna Hensley Taylor. Uh, remember her family in prayers. Uh, remember Margie Neely Stewart, COPD. Uh, remember Jean Craig Thompson. Remember her family and pray for her family. Uh, Linda LeMaster Root, healing for her shoulder operation. Uh, her husband has kidney stones. Uh, Linda LeMaster, I believe that's my cousin. Love you all. Uh, pray for her husband. I don't know his name, but he has kidney stones. Pray for him that God will touch him in that. Uh, pray for Tony 
Brock, remember his wife, babies, himself and prayers. Uh, remember these people. They need your prayer. They take that time to send these prayer requests in, and we want you to know about them. Please pray for them. Get them on your heart. Get them on your mind. If you can't remember them all, say, God, pray for those prayer requests. You know who they are. You know their unspoken request. Pray for Buck Sloan, his daughter, his new baby, his son had the wisdom teeth pulled out and going through a tough time with that. And believe me, I know about that. Pray for Buck Sloan and his family, his son and daughter. Pray for Mary Ann Brummett Spence in need of prayer. Whatever that prayer request is, God knows about. Pray for Mary Ann Burnett Spence. And pray for Rhinestone McKinney. I love you, Rhinestone. Uh, keep it real out there. Keep working for God. And uh, you're out there on the road traveling with a cowboy band. Remember her. Remember her daughter, Sarah Good. And uh, Lavora Mason, remember those two little girls. They need your prayer. that They'll get family ties back together, get closer to God. Remember Diane Jackson. Hard time dealing with loss of her son in 2013 and her husband, December the 13th of 2014. I remember when I got that call, Diane Jackson. Uh, God bless Bill in heaven today. Uh, Pray for Diane. Pray for her, her family. Betty Trotter Pat, Pate. Betty Trotter Pate. Her family is in need of prayer. Pray for Betty. Pray for Joan Bayless in need of prayer. Joan, one of my biggest fans. I'll never forget. I was in Middlesbrough at a radio station doing an interview. She come running out. And she's been there always through the hard times. Thank you, Joanne Bayless. We love you. Came up to the ride to Frankfurt too. And the cameramen... The editors and everybody that's here today remembers her. She came up there when we did the ride to Frankfurt. Teresa Fee, heart problems, remember her and please pray for Teresa Fee. Mason, Athy, little boy was in a four-wheeler accident just in the last few days. Uh, got a fractured skull, bleeding on the brain in UK in Lexington, Kentucky. Remember that baby. Remember that little boy. And that's uh, Mason, Athy. Remember that little boy and pray for him. Michelle, uh, Elm Coffey, loss of her friend who suffered from uh, cystic fibrosis. Remember her. Remember their family, the grieving hearts of that family. Brenda Howard Heck in the hospital. Edna House's uh, youth minister, uh, his mother very ill and sick. Please pray for them. That's Brenda Howard. I hope I'm saying that right. H-O-E-C-K, Hoke. So remember them. Remember Brenda. Remember her family. Uh, remember Julie Ann Adams uh, has, has cancer and uh, going through some real hard times and hard treatment right now. Please remember Julie Ann Adams. Her friend is going through cancer and uh, I, I don't Mitzi if, if I'm saying that right please remember her she's battling cancer Kathy Carnes her son is waiting a heart transplant Tyler Carnes we just cannot pray enough for these people please continue to pray prayer warriors Tyler Carnes he's right here on her old heart uh, Joel uh, and Tony Brock's niece, uh, uh, little baby named London, goes to Cincinnati Children's Hospital in May. That's my cousin, Ben Brock's boy. I'm sure that's who it is, and grandbaby. Remember uh, London. Pray for them. Pray for everyone that's out there in trouble today. We're going to wrap it up here on the Verlin Show. I'm going to tell you about my sponsors real quick. The people that's standing behind me on the show. If you want to be a sponsor on the show, please contact us. There will be, uh, it'll come over the screen and Vince will talk to you at the end of the show about that. Many of you have asked, can you help me? Do you want to help bear the burden? Well, if that's your blessing and God's putting it on your heart to do that, please do so. I wouldn't want you to miss out on your blessing. Bolton's Towing, Corbin, Kentucky. Gene, Rusty, all of y'all down there. You've been more than a friend. You've stuck by me through some hard times. They sponsored the show. They sponsored it for a year. We're proud of you. 
all at Bolton's Towing. If you got big rigs running through there and you need someone or you're just local, call Bolton's Towing. You can count on them. Slusher's Auto Sales, Travis Slusher, used car lot. Travis deals in hot rods, he deals in classic cars. Call up Travis at Gray's, Kentucky. Mark Motors, been a friend of ours in time of trouble when our little girl was in trouble, going back and forth to Minnesota and the hospital in uh, Vanderbilt. Uh, Mark was there, he stuck by us. God touched our lives through Mark. Mark is a good man, he's got a great family. Stop by, if you need a car, go by and see him locally. Lighthouse Ministries at Pineville, Kentucky. They've recently opened up a homeless shelter. Uh, they have just been doing wonderful things in the community for so long. They've helped us during the toy drive. They've helped us in so many ways I could stand here and talk for an hour. So go by, help them. If you have any way of getting them help during Christmas, uh, they give out food to people all over the country back there in Kentucky, and they're good to them. We love you all. Thank you for what you're doing up there. Uh, uh, Sharon, James Teeny, we appreciate you. Uh, vets serving vets, Middlesbrough, Kentucky. I'm so sorry to tell you, uh, Strat Kempsey, if I'm saying that right, Strat Kempsey passed away earlier this week. Soldier, we honor you, Strat, for what you've done and thank you for your services and fighting for our freedom. They lost him this week, Vets Serving Vets. He was a member of Vets Serving Vets, and they're grieved about it. So please pray for them. Pray for the family. i um, like to talk to you about uh, Tar Buddies, my friend there in Gray's that's got the tar store. Uh, go by and see Jay if you need tars, anything that he can do. And I was by there one day, and i got to tell you this. I was by there, and he comes out with the mats to put in the floor of the car before they put it in the shop or when he was leaving. They made sure they didn't mess the carpet up. And what was wrote on those mats, you got to see it. They're there to service you and do you the way they want to be treated and treat you the way they want to be treated. So go by and see Tar Buddies, CJ and all the staff there at Tar Buddies, Gray's, Kentucky, right on US 25E. Reed's Transmission, don't forget them. They're doing a great cause down there. Uh, Merle and Leslie, uh, they're really helping the schools out. They're doing great things. They have that big event coming up. I have a new post office box that you can contact us at. Vince is going to tell you about that. And I thank you for joining in. We're still at the beautiful ranch here at David Frizzell's in Tennessee, Music City, USA. Contact The Verlin Show at theverlinshow at yahoo.com. Send us your prayer requests, guest suggestions, or just tell us what you think about the show. If you'd like to be a corporate sponsor, just let us know at theverlinshow at yahoo.com and someone from our office will be in touch. If you'd like to be a supporter of The Verlin Show and partner with us to keep this exciting and uplifting show on the air, just send a love offering to Verlin Brock, 9 Music Square South, Suite 376, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203. Now back to more of The Verlin Show. Welcome back to The Verlin Show. I have with me today Alan Coleman. Alan, uh, we've just had a great show here with David Frizzell. Uh, everything's going so great. Uh, I want you to tell him, Alan, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for what you've done well, for you. Verlin Brock and what you've yeah. done for uh, the Verlin Show. Uh, Alan's made it possible that we could actually be on the air. Uh, we couldn't afford a lot of the editing and a lot of the stuff that we really, really need to do. And, Alan's been really, really good to me. He's been good to my career. Um, and I want to tell you this. If you are out there and you have an event coming up or something, Alan, uh, you'll go to Kentucky anywhere they need, right? Well, we'll go any place anybody needs us. Uh, if you have an event, school event coming up or something like that, please get in touch with Alan. Uh, his number will be up on the screen there. Just watch. Uh, it's Coleman Teleproductions, Nashville, Tennessee. Alan's filmed my videos, and I can tell you, uh, you won't find anybody anywhere that will be any more dedicated than what Alan does. Uh, you did a lot of work for David, right? In the last past years, we did two one-hour specials for David uh, out near uh, the Grand Ole Opry House. Uh, they played on RFD. They were truck shoots. Uh, we had six cameras and a crane. and. Uh, David, David is a real performer. Oh, he, he, is. Is. he is. He's been uh, around the Grand Ole Opry and, uh, for a number of years. 
and he's a very professional singer. So I feel honored that we were able to do his shows, uh, and they aired, uh, both of them aired, uh, I think two or three times on RFD. So, uh, and we're talking to him about doing some more shows in the future. I'm just proud, uh, I'm proud that he let us come here today, Alan, and, and film the show here, and a part of the show. They've been very kind to us here today. Uh, we thank you for joining in. Uh, I want to kind of brief what we're wanting to do. Uh, Alan, I want to kind of follow the stars in the music industry in Nashville and bring it back to Kentucky and build the heritage of where we're all from. We're all from whether you're from Texas, uh, California, New York City, or wherever. There's nothing like knowing about Jesus Christ. There's nothing like knowing about what keeps us together and in God's will. And that's what I want to revive. I want to see our families that are in trouble and out there, Alan, that's got problems in their life. I want them to be able to know that they can speak out. We just opened a prayer uh, warriors uh, site here on Facebook and on the net, and we want you to come on, be a prayer warrior. Uh, pray for the people that's in trouble out there today. And uh, they're everywhere, Alan. People's in trouble. Uh, there's trouble in the land. And we want to see you be able to get help. Uh, we want to see the people be able to return back to God and do something to be able to save our children from destruction like what's going on out there in the world today. We want to make a difference here on The Berlin Show about prayer. And that's the most important thing that we call your name here and the people that you need uh, prayer for. I've got some events, some things going on uh, out there that we want you to come to. Uh, Tyler Carnes, uh, they're having a benefit show uh, May the 9th, I believe, back there in Bell County. Uh, we want you to come out to that. We want you to, if you can't come, please donate. Please try to do something for Tyler. Uh, Tyler is uh, Cincinnati Children's Hospital. He's waiting a heart transplant. And Kathy, his mom, they've had a hard time. And his dad, I want to see God do something for that young man. And there's so many of you out there uh, that needs God as well as myself. And we want to pray for you. We want our prayer warriors. We want the people to pray. And if you're not a prayer warrior, come on. You are now. We're telling you about it. Join in. Click on the Verlin Show at yahoo.com and go to Verlin's, uh, prayer, the Verlin Show Prayer Warriors, I believe it is. And just talk to people out of Florida yesterday. Talk to Camille uh, out of Florida about her, I believe it's her sister-in-law, I'm going to talk about her here just in a little bit, 45 years old and battling cancer. And we want you to stay tuned to The Verlin Show. I'll be right back. Contact The Verlin Show at theverlinshow at yahoo.com. Send us your prayer requests, guest suggestions, or just tell us what you think about the show. If you'd like to be a corporate sponsor, just let us know at theverlinshow at yahoo.com and someone from our office will be in touch. If you'd like to be a supporter of The Verlin Show and partner with us to keep this exciting and uplifting show on the air, just send a love offering to Verlin Brock, 9 Music Square South, Suite 376, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203. Now back to more of The Verlin Show. I got to tell you, I'm so honored, David, that you'll let me play with you here oh, and sing, man, with the guitars. I always dreamed of this. So here we go. I used to listen to David on the tailgate back here in eastern Kentucky, and now I get a chance to sing with him. You get to watch it first right here on The Verlin Show. All right. Yeah. It's I'm glad when there's life is on. i 
celestial soul Thank you, David, for being on the show. Brother. Had a good time. I love you. Now, See next you, time, hey, we got to get Jimmy Fortune oh. here. Get Jimmy. Oh, you want a real show? Oh, oh real okay, show. all That's right. What well, I'm talking in about. that case, we'll call Jimmy. All we'll right. call Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you all for joining in to the Verlin Show. We'll see you next time right here on Living Faith TV. Let's take it out for all you. All right. Well, I fly away. Go to fly. I'm